Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Gather round and watch as I subject myself to another round of cactus-induced torture. Not like that, get your mind out of the gutter. What is this torture, you might ask? Well, I installed a dubious little mod for Terraria that transforms the whole world into the Sahara Desert and genetically modifies all the creatures so that they can store an ungodly amount of these green f***ers in... Well, I don't actually know where they store them, but goddamn, do they store a lot of them. Regardless, I pressed on and even found ways to harness the spherical green evil for my own. Now, this is the second part of the story and starts just after defeating the fleshy boy. So if you want to see how that went, please feel free to come back to this one later. With that out of the way, I hope you enjoy and let's roll that intro. Haven't missed that. The first thing we got to work on was upgrading the elongated shack that we called our base. However, we needed materials and we couldn't just build with cacti and sand. So we ventured down the mine to gather something more suitable. But the underground desert was not what it used to be. New evils had found their home there and we were definitely not welcome. First up were the snake mummies. <laughs> Lord have mercy. However, looks are very much deceiving as these things could easily catch up and outmaneuver us. And when they did, they could pack a hell of a punch, although I would have preferred it if they kicked me, if you know what I mean. Then there were the sand poachers, quite safe if left alone, but when you're tearing up their natural habitat to build a prison, it's kinda hard to do so. Soon enough, we got the materials we needed and got to work upgrading the compound. But don't worry, there are still plenty of horrors we didn't encounter right away. Now, I'd say that looks pretty good, and still as luxurious as ever. Then we finally opened the treasure bag we got from the Wall of Flesh, and headed over to the Crimson to bless our world with new precious metals. And for some reason thought it would be a good idea to jump into a pit of enemies I wasn't prepared for yet. But soon enough, we smashed all the altars we needed, with only a few inconveniences. And headed home to start mining. Except my silly ass didn't mine any hellstone for a new pickaxe, before going into hard mode, even though I said I could mine it in the last video. So it was off back down to the underworld, and after being brutally harassed by a dune splicer, we managed to gather some. But not too much, as our base was promptly targeted for an attack by an army of pirates. Bro, oh, leave me alone. Returning to the surface, these little rascals were already causing trouble. And not to mention, I wasn't exactly prepared for this event yet. Regardless, there wasn't any other way to get rid of them. So, I tried not to die too much. After that, we could finally go and mine the new ores. Now usually you're supposed to gather them one at a time. In my case, going from cobalt, mithril, and lastly, titanium. Making gear out of each one so it's easier to gather the next. 
But if you're just a god gamer and Terraria veteran like myself, you can just skip through each one, only making the pickaxes, to rush getting the best one, titanium. If you want to suffer, that is. You see, having very early hard mode weapons in a biome you're not supposed to go to yet is quite challenging. Who would have thought? Also, here's proof I use Smart Cursor when mining, so you can stop yapping about how I don't use it. You know who you are. We also gathered some crystals from the underground hallowed biome to make some bullets later on. With enough cobalt to make the pickaxe, we then moved on to getting the next ore, which is found deeper and proved to be more challenging to get. Oh, oh. <laughs> what the fuck? Can't catch a break, bro. Get off me! Always me as well. Okay, why is this little guy doing 90 damage then? Oh, fuck my ass then. But we pressed on and managed to get enough for the next pickaxe. Then there was only one ore left to get, titanium. It being the rarest of the three, it was found the deepest on the ground. And we also needed to get the most of this, because we weren't just making a pickaxe, we had to make a full suit of armour. Slowly but surely, we kept gathering small amounts of the stuff, until, finally... But what good is a suit of armour if we're not dealing some decent damage? Now you may have noticed before when we opened the Wall of Flesh treasure bag, we didn't get anything related to our class, the Ranger. So we had to go back down and smack old Fleshy Boy for a second time. Now, I know, I know, watching someone grind hard mode gear isn't the most interesting. So I'm just going to skim over the next few things so we can get to some cactus related shenanigans, shall we say. First, we went and killed a giant sky worm in order to make some wings. Oh my god. Then we scoured the four corners of the world, along with the seven seas. to make a pair of green boots. We also summoned and fought a Hallowed Mimic and got a very good weapon first try. Yes. Oh, first try. Now here's where things start to go off the rails. You see, I was blessed with some divine knowledge from one of you guys about how to harness the raw power of the cactus. The first tests were okay, but the idea kind of evolved until I had come up with this monstrosity. What have I done? Oh no. Oh, that's, uh, that's not good. Yes, what you're looking at is the start of some highly dangerous cactus technology, abusing the mechanic added by the Desert Hell mod and somewhat harnessed using some wires and statues. The only issue, turning it off. I can't, I can't. wait. I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh my god. After many iterations, building down low. What have I created? And up high. We came up with yet another way to cheese one of the mechanical bosses. Now, the destroyer, mutated by cacti, is usually the first in a trio of bosses you have to defeat to progress forward, and is notoriously easy to beat with certain weapons, given his large surface area. So why not pelt the big boy with rolling cacti?
After coming so close to beating him, we made some changes to the setup, got harassed by wyverns, and received a tiny, minuscule amount of help from a certain bow. Until finally, Yes! Oh, I'm not biting right there. Now listen, some might say that the bow did most of the work in that fight, and yes, you'd be right. But let me ask you this, is the bow a voluptuous green ball of death? No. No it is not. Regardless, we now had access to the destroyer's souls, and a handful of holy metal. With the souls, we crafted the Mega Shark, an amalgamation of sharks, a minigun, and a total disregard for marine life. Then we gained a healthy dose of insanity, farming mummies for dark shards. And once we upgraded our shotgun, crafted new armor, and fought off more pirates, as well as getting extremely lucky, oh, shit. it was time for the next mechanical boss. Now, I don't mean to brag or anything like that, but uh, we beat Skeleton Prime first try, as well as the twins. Let's go. I know. I'm simply just too good. The twin souls were then used in combination with those from the other two bosses to make an upgrade to our pickaxe. And Skeletron souls were used to make a flamethrower. God bless Germany. Then it was off to the jungle to prepare for the next boss. And of course by prepare, I mean completely removing a good chunk of an ecosystem. After irreversibly damaging one habitat, we then used the several tons of mud we gathered to make a new one for a sentient mushroom to live in. There he is. <laughs> and once we made a new set of armor that for some reason turns us into a Sims character, we headed back to the arena to fight yet another boss that had been turned into a cactus. Another boss which I would have defeated first try, had I not forgotten that this is master mode, and no matter how much defense you have, there will always be something that will kill you in two hits or less. And of course we will never be able to tank a hit from the dreaded green ball that has been the bane of my existence for the past week. Oh my fucking god. Of course! But eventually we got a good run going, and managed to slay another foul green creature. After defeating Cacterra, a few new things were unlocked for us to craft and explore. First, the Mushroom Man from earlier now sold us a machine to make a new set of armor out of, well, mushrooms of course. As well as this, the dungeon now had a whole gang of new inhabitants. There were the red ones, the blue ones, and of course, the big boys. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, please. Ah. From one dungeon to the next, it was now time to enter the jungle temple. Home to more snake creatures, although these ones were a lot less enticing, and the next boss. Now, I don't know what happened when fighting Golem this time, but I died many more times than I'd like to admit. Maybe it was because he looked extremely goofy, and it threw me off. Quite a lot. So goofy. Or maybe it was because I didn't lock in. But eventually, we figured out how to play the game again, and managed to pull through. And then, 
we were in the end game. Arguably the most challenging part of the game, with the next boss triggering a chain of events that forces you to then fight Terraria's final boss. But at the moment we were focused on starting all that, heading back to the dungeon. The now resided the group of cultists worshipping a strange tablet that housed their leader, and in our universe is of course a giant rolling cactus. Then with some changes to the arena, we were ready to bring him into existence. Oh no, indeed, as this was another boss I thought I was pretty good at. After many, many attempts, we managed to beat yet another green ball. The cultist's defeat had now caused celestial creatures to invade the desert hell, in the form of four pillars representing each class. The one we were after was the vortex pillar, as once destroyed, its fragments could be used to make two very powerful ranged weapons. The pillars themselves, being shielded, could only be breached once 100 enemies had been killed, which was easier said than done. The method I adopted to break the shield was to pretty much run in, kill as many as possible before I was inevitably torn limb from limb, and respawn to do it all over again, which very, very slowly allowed us to drop the pillar's shield. Then after lighting the thing up with our flamethrower, it popped, granting us the powerful vortex fragments. We then crafted the last gun we were going to need, the vortex blaster and move swiftly on to clearing the other pillars. But before destroying the last one, we made a new arena, as we're almost ready to challenge Terraria's final boss, the Moon Lord. Once again, mutated into spherical green nightmare fuel. Then we travelled to the fourth and final pillar, destroyed it, headed back, and waited. Well of course it wouldn't be that easy. Out of all the bosses in this playthrough, this was the one I struggled with the most. And looking back on it, it was mainly down to the fact that my arena was kind of shit. So watch as I define insanity or fighting the Moon Lord. And another thing that made this fight harder was the fact that rolling cacti kept spawning out of nowhere. I still have no idea what caused these to spawn. That issue aside, after many more unsuccessful attempts, we finally swapped out some of our gear and upgraded the arena.
And after a lot of very close attempts. Fucking final. With that, we had beaten the game, and as we placed the final relic, we wondered if we would ever come back to this arid desert, and all the cacti that we'd spent so long with. Absolutely fucking not. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to the creator of the Desert Hell mod. It definitely lived up to its name. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, and if you're interested, feel free to check out my Discord server. With that, I'll see you in the next one.